So now we're going to expand our naming to talk about things that are called polyatomic ions. I know this is a real stretch, but polyatomic ions are ions that have more than one atom. Polyatomic ions are sort of like groups of atoms that hang around as a reactive ion. Best way to think about a polyatomic ion is a car tire. Car tires can be found by themselves, running around, and it's extremely difficult, although it's possible, to take a car tire and break it up into its pieces, into a rim and the rubber and the inner tube and all those things, but it kind of runs around, we, we don't refer to that as, oh, okay, yes, my car has a frame and four sets of the, you know, there's the, there's the frame and the inner tube and the rubber. No, we know it collectively as a tire. Can we break down the tire into smaller pieces? Yes, but we normally refer to it as a tire. And we could take the tire off this one car and put it on some other car. But it's one sort of reactive species that sort of runs around as a group. And so we have similar kinds of things in chemistry. And they're groups of atoms that are ions, right? So here, and they have their own special name, and they run around as a group, and they sort of stay together as a group. So NO2 with, with a minus one charge, the whole thing put together, has its own special name, and that's called nitrite. There's another, comp, there's another polyatomic ion that has three oxygens in it with one nitrogen. It still has the same minus one charge, and its name is called nitrate. NH4 with a, as a plus one charge is known as the ammonium ion. This isn't ammonia, this is ammonium, and it's a plus one ion. Now there's lots of these polyatomic ions, and when we name compounds that contain these polyatomic ions, and you need to be able to recognize these in molecules, when we name these polyatomic ions, we follow the same rules as we did before for naming ionic compounds. Because these are all, nitri all, all species that contain polyatomic ions, almost all of them are, the naming system we use is the same as that of ionic compounds. So if we were to make this particular compound, NH4NO3, and notice it's a one-to-one -one ratio because the ammonium ion is plus one and nitrate's a minus one. This is known as ammonium nitrate, not mononitrogen, tetrahydrogen, mononitrogen trioxide, absolutely not. You have to recognize, oh yes, there's ammonium and there's nitrate. And here's another example. So in this case, we have one copper and two nitrite polyatomic ions, there's the nitrite, NO2, which each has a minus one charge, and since there's two nitrites for one copper, that means the copper in this particular compound is a, is a plus two, so the whole thing all is neutral and cancels out, so this is known as copper two nitrate. So for this class, you're responsible for the names of names and charges of several polyatomic ions. Textbooks vary from textbook to textbook as to what are the common polyatomic ions. These I need you to memorize. These all have plus one, or I'm sorry, a minus one charge. These are all minus two charge. These are minus three charge. And here's the one positive. These are all negative, and there's only one that is greater than zero. Now you need to memorize these, and I don't ask you to memorize a whole lot for this course, the stuff I have you memorize is the stuff that I need you to be able to very quickly pull out of your out of your head when we're doing these problems. So that's why you need to memorize them. Acids and bases are the last or the next group that we're going to talk about naming. And acids and are defined as species that form hydrogen ion in solution. And bases are solutions or substances that when put into water, they form hydroxide ion in aqueous solution or water solution. Naming bases is actually re really easy because um, the simple bases all have an OH minus in the system. So we just sort of name it just by the, the normal rules of naming ionic compounds. So this is hydroxide, that's the name of this polyatomic ion. So CaOH2 is calcium hydroxide. And notice that there's two OH is because calcium is always a plus two, so this is simply known as calcium hydroxide. Chromium 
three hydroxide, we'd have this formula. So there's the chromium, it's a plus three. That's why there's three hydroxides, so it's chromium plus three. So it's chromium three hydroxide. So naming bases is no more different than naming any other ionic compound. The naming of acids, however, that's screwy. So the naming of acids, the anion dictates the name of the acid. So if the anion in your acid ends in IDE, the name of your acid, you drop the IDE, slap hydro in front and an ick on the back. This makes a lot more sense if we just look at a couple of examples. So we know that Cl- is, called, is the chloride ion. So according to our rules, IDE, if the compound HCl would be hydrochloric. So we drop the IDE, turn into ick, and we slap a hydro in front. So HCl is hydrochloric acid. One way of sort of helping you remember all of these rules is to remember one good example of all of the different kinds to you and then use those as a reference set because you're not going to be able to memorize every single acid name. You need to understand the system. So if you memorize one example of each different type, then it comes much more easy when you're taking quizzes and such. The anion ends in the letters I-T-E. Then you drop the I-T-E and you add an us. There's no prefix. You don't put anything in front of it. So NO2 is the nitrite ion, so HNO2 would be nitrous acid. And then the third group is if the anion ends in ATE, then the ATE turns to ick. Notice we have ick up here, but down here there's no hydra. It's just ick. So CO3 is a minus two, that's the carbonate anion, it's on your list, carbonate anion. So if I add two hydrogens, because I have to add two hydrogens, because carbonate is a minus two charge, this is carbonic acid.